Pashak for some non Polish speakers. Are there any? I think so. Uh, Christopher, Chris is good enough. Uh, I work for Samsung R&D Institute Poland. Uh, usually I work with the USB, uh, with the USB support in Tyson. It's an uh, operating system like Samsung uh, in some cooperation with Intel. Uh, today I would like to tell you a few words about building your own USB device. What it means building and what it means composing, we will talk about this later. Okay, so first question. How many of you guys is familiar with the USB protocol? Raise your hand. Okay, not so many. There is some introduction, so for those of you who are not familiar, please focus on the beginning of the, of the presentation. Uh, all the knowledge required to understand the core of this presentation will be delivered in the first part. So the first part is the uh, introduction to the USB protocol to the USB devices. Then we will go to composing the device. What is the difference between composing and creating a function? What it is a function? It will be we will discover during this presentation. Then we will get some summary and the QA session at the end of this presentation. If you don't understand something what I'm saying, what I'm trying to describe, please raise your hand and ask your questions when they appear. Okay, so the first page. What USB is about? This may be a tough question, so maybe let's start with the internet. Because internet is about the same thing as the USB. It's about providing and using a service. In USB, of course, we have different kinds of services. We have storage. Plus pen drive is an example of storage service. We have the printing. We have the Ethernet, we have the camera, and many, many others. How is it done? Well, in USB we have two different sides of communication. First of them is the USB host. It's the machine which uh, is used by the end user of this functionality. So if you are using some USB device, you are over here. If you connect your pen drive, this is your computer. The pen drive is one of the USB devices which are connected to your USB host. Single USB device may provide multiple services, multiple functionalities. So, for example, one physical device can be both camera and the pen drive in the same time. What is important here is that the USB host is the master of the communication. USB devices are slaves. So, the USB is a host controlled bus. Single host may have connected multiple devices, but device may be connected only to one host. Okay, so what USB device really is? So first of all, it's a piece of hardware for USB communication, because if we would like to talk about USB device, we need to communicate using the USB protocol. So we need some hardware for this. Then, we need implementation of the USB protocol itself. This allows us to communicate on a logical level between host and the device. When we have this uh, functionality provided by our vendor, then we may implement some useful protocol. What it means useful? Well, for example, the US, uh, when we uh, would see this in a terms of internet, the USB protocol implementation is the equivalent of TCP or UDP implementation. Then we have HTTP or SSH, anything that is built on the top of it. So that's the useful protocol. When we are able to communicate, then we need some functionality which we would like to provide to host. So we need, for example, a piece of flash storage in our pen drive, which we can use to store the data received from the host. Usually, this, this one is the most complicated, but in in general, it's simple. It takes commands from the USB and transfers them to the hardware language of our desired functionality hardware. Communication between host and the device is done between host and one of the endpoints. Endpoints are a little bit equivalent of ports from the TCP IP or UDP. 
So device may have up to 31 endpoints. Each of them gets a unique address. It's a single byte uh, which describes the, uh, identifies the data stream. Only endpoint with the address zero may transfer data in the both directions. All other endpoints are unidirectional. It means that endpoint may send the data or receive the data, not both. What it means that endpoint is in? Well, because USB is host centric, the in endpoint means that it is able to transfer the data from device to host. Out endpoint means that it is able to trans to receive the data from host on the device. What are the types? Well, in internet, we have generally two types of connection, TCP and UDP. In USB, we have four types available when we use them. Well, the control one is the one which is used uh, during the discovering of new device, only endpoint number zero, we will talk about this later, can use uh, this one, and later it can be used by the application. The interrupt. Interrupt endpoints are used to transfer a small amount of time-sensitive data. For example, in your heat devices. If you move your mouse, you'd like to move, you'd like to move it smoothly in your system. So that's why you use the, the interrupt endpoint. For general purpose, for example, in pen drives, we use bulk transmission. Bulk means, dear, dear kernel, here you have a portion of data, please send it to my device. I don't care when, please send it. When it will be, when it will, will, it will be possible. ISO, this one is used to transfer a large amount of time sensitive data. For example, kind of video streams. When you have your web camera, it's, it doesn't matter that you drop a single frame. It is better to drop this frame than hold that whole, whole stream and force the retransmission. <coughs> so there is no delivery warranty. What USB device, how USB device looks from the protocol level? Well, we have our endpoints of communication. So here we can send or receive the data. Such endpoints are grouped into interfaces. Interface is the group of endpoints which is used to implement some well sandbox functionality. Usually, if we have multiple endpoints in the interface, we have two of them. One of them is uh, endpoint type in, and the second one is endpoint type out. Why? Because we would like to have bidirectional data stream between host and the device. That's the most common. Interfaces are grouped into configurations. All interfaces in single configuration can be used in the same time. But device may have multiple configurations and only one of them may be active at the same time. So host can communicate only with interfaces from active configuration. USB bus itself. As I said, USB is a host controlled bus. Nothing on the bus can happen without host first initiating. Nothing. Device cannot itself send any data. So the interrupt endpoint is only the name. It's implemented as constant pooling of your USB device with a specified interval. It's not the interrupt as you know from the hardware. There is nothing like this. USB is a pool bus. It means that host constantly asks the device for data. If some driver needs to read the data from the device, it schedules the in transfer, and the host controller will ask, for example, for 10 seconds your pen drive, are you ready, are you ready, are you ready, etc. Okay. The transfer, the data transfer in the USB is split into USB transfers. And the USB transfers are split into single transactions. 
single transactions means delivery of the smallest possible portion of data to the endpoint. This is limited by the hardware specification and it is declared during the discovering of the new device. So it's a single portion of data. Usually it's about a few bytes, nothing more. The transfer is a set of tra consequences <coughs> transactions limited by the short transaction, so the transaction with a smaller amount of data than this one, or it may end up when uh, the required amount of data is already transferred. So if you have, for example, one megabyte to send, then the transfer will be end after uh, one megabyte, no matter how they split into transactions. How does single transaction look like? First of all, the in transaction. So the host would like to read some data from the device. First of all, the host sends an in token. So, hello device, I would like to take some data from you. That device have, has two options. First option, when it is ready, okay host, here you have, here is my data, take it. If it is not ready, it sends, no, sorry, I'm not ready to send you this data. If host receives the name, it will simply send once again the in token and wait for the answer. So when you are waiting for the data on the bus, what is really happening on the bus is, do you have data? No. Do you have data? No. Do you have data? No. Oh, yeah, here you have it. This is your data. So it's constant pooling. If you would like to send some data, so the out transfer, the host sends the out token, then sends the data, and if device is ready to receive this data, it sends the acknowledge. If it is not, it sends the NAC. If host receives an NAC, it does once again the same. So once again the out token, the data, and the NAC. This is not a good solution, isn't it? Because transferring a token is cheap. Token is, a, for example, two bytes, or maybe one byte, depends. So this is the token. This is very, very short. And this is, for example, uh, 500 tokens. So it's quite large. So to save the bandwidth on the USB bus, the high-speed USB used ping and not yet uh, for the out operation to not send this data many, many, many times when the device is not. So it's kind of bad to say. Okay, one of the famous features of the USB is plug and play. It is implemented by discovering the uh, USB device abilities, and the process of discovering these abilities is called enumeration. How it is done? Well, first of all, we have to plug in the device. Believe me, USB devices when plugged works better. <laughs> then host needs to detect the connection. So we have the ports and we have to detect that something has changed on this port and we have to do all the uh, query with the device. We have to set an, un an address because each device on the bus has its own unique address, a little bit the equivalent of IP. Uh, thanks to this, host can easily identify two devices. Um, to which it's sending the data. Then we are asking the device to get the information. What do you have? What is your name? What do you offer? What could you give me? Then, when we have all the information, host needs to choose the configuration. So device may have multiple of them, and host choose which one should be now active. When the device is active, <coughs> We have to choose the driver for the interfaces. Choose the driver for the interfaces, not for the device. Yes, that's true. USB interface in Linux is a part of device hierarchy. So the driver for the device as a whole usually doesn't do anything. The, drive, the drivers which provide the functionality from the USB device 
are drivers for the interfaces. And then we are ready, we can use all the features of the USB device. Okay, how does the device details look like? Well, each entity of the USB board, each of this, is described using a structure called USB descriptor. Each USB descriptor has a common header. This is a kind of uh, polymorphism in the USB world. We have the length, so how much of the data there is, and we have the descriptor type, so what is the meaning of the data in the string. Okay, the most important fields from the descriptor. First of all, the device descriptor. ID vendor. Well, it's two bytes uh, decimal number, which you can buy from the USB organization for a couple of dollars, uh, and this identifies you as a vendor in the USB world. Then, if you have your ID vendor, you can uh, add some ID products so the uh, ID vendor identifies the manufacturer and the ID product identifies a single product. If your device or your interface implements some well-known, well-specified class. So some well-known protocol. It may belong to some class of devices or class of interfaces. What it means? It means that instead of using your proprietary driver or your device-specific driver, you may use the generic one. For example, this is why most of the pen drives work without any drivers installed because they all belong to mass storage class. Where it is? Oh, here it is. And they all share the same driver. It's a driver which implements communication protocol defined in mass storage standard. <laughs> what next? All those values are simple digits, so we have also, but we have also the opportunity to provide some human, human readable strings. So the device, apart from the USB descriptor, so is also a very big, ta a big table uh, with which you can uh, access using this index. And the string uh, marked with this index means, for example, the manufacturer name. It's a human readable string of the vendor of, the, of this device. We have the manufacturer, the product name, and the serial number. Of course, the device descriptor needs to have information about how many configurations there is in the device. Each configuration may declare different power consumption. And that, that's all. Why? Because, for example, if, you're, uh, if you are uh, only powered from the USB bus, then if your disk would like to run with very low RPMs, you need less power than if you would like to run it with full speed. Yep? Sorry, can you access that? Yep, yep, you can do this using LS USB command. I will show this during the demo. Okay, and of course the string related with the configuration. Then we have the interface descriptor and the information about the class and the string for, the, for this interface and number of endpoints in this interface. In each USB endpoint descriptor, we will have the address and the values which describes us that you should recall this, the max packet size, so the size of single transaction, uh, and the values which uh, defines uh, the type of the endpoint. It's the PM attributes here that uh, type of endpoint is encoded. We have also the VEB interval field. This field is used in interrupt and ISO uh, transfer. It's the um, time interval when pulling the device for data. Okay, so we know what the USB device really is. So now let's think about the USB driver. Well, it may be a piece of kernel code, but it is also possible to talk with your USB device from the user space. To do this, you may use the libusb 
uh, library. <coughs> if it is a piece of kernel code, so it's a kernel module, it usually provides something to user space. It may be network interface, if you connect the USB network card, it may be the block device if you connect the pen drive, or it may be the TTI port if you connect uh, some adapter from USB to serial. On the other hand, this driver is a simple implementation of communication protocol. What it does, it simply write, grabs the request from the blog layer, from the TTI, or from the network layer, wraps them into the protocol and sends to the device. That's all. Nothing more. Okay. How to choose the suitable driver for your device? Like I said, this driver simply does nothing. There are only two of them in kernel. One is used by the USB over IP project to pass the device to another computer via the network. And the second one is generic driver, which is used by probably by, by all of your uh, USB devices. But the struct USB driver is a driver for the interface. So it's a driver which provides something to user space and implements the communication protocol. How to choose a suitable for the particular interface? Well, if your device needs some special handling, so you, are, you have a vendor specific you may use vendor ID and the product ID which you go from the USB organization. If your driver implements some well-defined standardized protocol, like the mass storage protocol, you may use the standard driver and it will be chosen using the interface class, subclass and the other information. What is nice here, that the vendor ID and product ID doesn't matter in this case. So if interface belongs to a suitable class, it may have very bullshit uh, digits in the vendor ID and product ID. So it doesn't matter. This is what uh, the Chinese do, and they simply write one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D, and it is working because the class is. <coughs> yep, there was a question. No, no, we, we are also doing this. <laughs> Important also. <laughs> There's a lot of manufacturers because for the vendor ID you have to pay. And this is for when the drivers for the device classes are for free. So if you don't need any special handling, that's fine. Create one. Well, what we need? The checklist. 
First of all, we need suitable hardware. Well, of course, you may take the pen drive, you may take the FPGA and do it by your own. That's fine, please do this. But you can also get the Linux board. BeagleBone, Oldroid, Orange Pi, all of them has the USB device controller. <coughs> so all, each of them is able to introduce itself as any USB device, any apart from hub. Because hub has to work in the pernicious mode, so it, may, it has to catch the uh, messages to other devices. So that's not, not possible on those controllers. Then you need implementation of the USB product. But wait, we are running Linux, and the Linux kernel provides this. So why not use it? Then we will need the implementation of some useful protocol. Well, they are available out of the box in the Linux kernel. So let's just take and use it. Then we need some desired functionality. So what we are going to offer. But maybe we can emulate this. Or we can use our system <coughs> infrastructure. So for example, we may say that, OK, I'm a pen drive, and one of my disks as the A B or SDA3 is the pen drive. Okay, that's fine. That, that's the desired functionality. Okay, the terminology from the Linux world. The USB device consists of two pieces. The hardware independent part, the USB gadget, so the implementation of the USB protocol, uh, useful protocol and all that kind of stuff, and the hardware with the driver. So the UDC is the USB device controller. It needs, obviously, a driver. Then we have the USB function. Well, the USB function is a piece of code which provides the functionality to the host. USB gadget is a glue layer which takes multiple functions and put them all into single USB device. Still hardware independent. To make a USB device, you will need here also the USB device controller. Okay. So the big picture, once again. We have our host, the USB bus, the driver for the hardware, USB core, gadget driver, so the, the, this is our gadget, the glue layer, the router, and this simply passes the communication to suitable functions. Function is the other side of the communication for the USB driver. So, on the host side, we have our web browser. We are sending some data through the network interface. It goes to USB driver. The USB driver packs it into communication protocol on the top of the USB, so the useful protocol, sends over the bus, and then the function receives it, unpack it, and pass to the network interface of your uh, device. Okay, to use all those functionalities from the Linux kernel, we need a suitable kernel config. We go to device drivers, USB support, USB gadget support, and choose USB gadget driver, configurable group, config FS. And we choose which of implemented useful protocol we would like to use. What is available? First of all, the Ethernet emulation. So the, one of the most common uh, used on the developer boards, you have the Ethernet over the USB. Then we have a cellular console, over the USB once again, the mass storage, so we may behave, behave as a pen drive, uh, human interface, video class, so the camera, uh, sound, printer, uh, the protocol from Nokia N900, and the loopback and the sourcing. The loopback uh, is a little bit equivalent of loopback from the internet, so it simply loops back the communication to the host. And the sourcing is a little bit equivalent of that zero and uh, that no, that null. What it means, compose a device. 
what we have to do? Well, first of all, we have to choose the identity, so the values from the device descriptor. We have to decide what functions we would like to have, so what we would like to provide to the host. We have to decide how many configurations and which function is available in which configuration. How to do this? We can use bare kernel config FS interface, so we will do make dear ln minus s and all that kind of stuff, but it looks like a magic spell, so it's not, not so easy to use. Then we can use the library, libusbg next. Uh, it allows us to create a simple C program in which you, you will write create gadget, create function, create configuration, and link this function with this configuration. That's all. So it's good, but we can do it better. There is a tool, it's a command line tool called GT. It's gadget tool. It allows you to write this instead of C code in the show script. So GT, gadget, create, GT, function, create, etc. But it's still writing something which looks like a code. It's a shell, but it still looks like a code. So instead of creating this like in the magic spell, let's declare. I want this device. And this is what gadget schemes really do. It's the declarative description of your USB gadget. So I declare. I would like to have such vendor ID, product ID, such strings, one function, it is ECM. ECM is the one of the Ethernet functions, so I will be able to have Ethernet over the USB, one configuration, and only this function in this configuration. The syntax is taken from the libconfig, it is interpreted by libusbgx, and it can be easily loaded using gtload. Okay, so let's go. Let's compose some devices. What I have here is the Android port. I will connect this to home. That's not good. <laughs> the other one, sorry. Oh, power supply. Oh, okay.
So we have the network interface on the device side, so on the Android. Endpoint 
1.0, the events are bind. This is when you connect your gadget with the uh, hardware on the device side. And unbind is obvious. Enable. You will get the enable event when host choose a configuration which contains your function. So this means, okay, now you are enabled, start the communication, start doing whatever you should do. And the setup is a setup request for the endpoint zero. It's a form in which control transfer works. Of course, you may use read write to communicate using other endpoints. Okay, I have some sample source code of the FunctionFS service. Here is our main. What we do is, first of all, prepare our FunctionFS. Here we generate the paths, endpoint zero. We open all the endpoints, write the descriptors. What are the descriptors? Here they are. So the interface descriptor, we are going to have a single interface with two endpoints and just fill them with the numbers. Then we write strings. Strings is nothing more than saying, okay, those, this string is in US English and this is the content of that string. No magic. Then we open all other endpoints and go to do chats because what I'm showing you is a simple application which allows you to talk uh, between host and the device using chat-like protocol. So the one side is saying and the other one is receiving. Uh, nothing special. Okay, in do chat we have to wait for the connection, so we are waiting for the enable event. And when we get the enable event, we start uh, talking with the host. As the host is sending us the data, we in the first step wait to receive the data, print it, then we get the data from the user, count the length of the transfer, and send it back to the host. How do we do this? Well, we send it using the write operation. First of all, we send the length, and then we send the boxes. Uh, not the case, what is the communication protocol, it is how do you simply use write on the file descriptor and that, that, that's all. Okay, how to set up and how it works. No, this is not the terminal. This is the one for me. Uh, what I like in the GT command line tool is that I can do GT minus RM, uh, RM minus RF, one, done. Everything is clear. If you would like to do this on the file system due to uh, config FS constraints, you will need to write about 10 lines or something like this. So it's a single command. Okay. So what I have here is device. It's a compiled uh, code which I showed you previously. We do gt load g1 minus o means don't bind the hardware automatically, my new gadget, but wait for me, I will do this manually. So minus minus file. Okay, this is done. Now we have to mount the instance of function FS. So you mount, and the instance name is chat minus the find. You see, there is a single file, the endpoint zero. Uh, Okay, I will need the internet connection because... No, cut, cut is not working on that file. Uh, no, this, 
this, this one is not important, it's not related to the gadget. I have to just bring up the network interface on the Android because I'm going to run the service in unlock mode and this is the only console I have. <laughs>